Good. Great to see you. And our next guest, you might know as Fiona's father, please welcome Brad Doris. I just wanted to know what that was like to return to that role after 35 years in a physical human form. Well, I was in... Wait, um, don't, make sure you don't spill anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I um, actually was in um, uh, um, Curse, um, so it hasn't been that long. Um, having said that, um, it was fun, to tell you the truth. Um, I mean, I had, I, I never gotten to work with the cast for the, um, for the TV series. I mean, I, I literally um, did Chucky in my house. Um, I have, I, uh, the, we, when my first wife played keyboards, and she did scales every day, which I was going to kill myself. <laughs> so we sound insulated the room, and, and we kind of made it, um, you know, so you could really play music in there, which means the sound dies immediately. It's designed for that to happen. And um, when we we tried it, everybody went crazy and said, "Yeah, this great sound in here. Let's do it. Let's do it in your house." So. I think, yeah, because usually in ADR you have to go into a studio, but he happened to have a weird studio on accident. Yeah, I had a studio. <laughs> Great. And there's a guy called Mobile Mike, and he gives me a suitcase, and, um, and then he runs the board. I had a lot of fun. I got to be with the cast, and, um, and, I, um, and I actually had to do a little work with them, and... Um, I had fun teasing them and making their life as difficult as I possibly could. Sure. You, how do you keep your energy up during like the late night shoot? It's like you're waiting all day. Uh, <laughs> um, you, you know, I drink a lot of caffeine and also, <laughs> this is like a boring answer, but it's the truth. I make sure um, to not eat a lot of sugar, if I like can avoid that, uh, my energy can be kind of steady. It's like this secret I figured out. Um, so on the days that I'm working, I try to not eat sugar, which seems like an insane answer, but try it, it kind of fucking works. <laughs> What's your uh, caffeine beverage of choice? Oh, black coffee all day long. I must have drank so much black coffee today. Um, yeah, how about you? Um, well, I'm kind of into Dunkin' lately. Yeah, I think yeah. In New York, I kind of live by three different Dunkins on the same block. And they have this sparked energy drink. I try not to drink them all the time, but they're what you're like. Hey, Dad, how do you keep your energy up, young man? I pace around. Yeah, he does. <laughs> I basically tease people. Yep, me too. Um, I talk to people. Um, and um, I drink a lot of tea. For uh, Fiona, Nico has been through, or Nika has been through so much in the series. Wow. Are, you, are you involved at all creatively? <laughs> the way she tortured, like, you come up with it? And what more could they do to her other than kill her? Um, I mean, the short answer is no, right? Actors, we don't really have any control. That's the truth. We're like puppets. But uh, Don Mancini, over the years, has become a good friend. So when he came up with the great idea of chopping my arms and legs off, I did get a courtesy phone call, and he was like, I got this great idea. <laughs> 
And he was on Zoom and the like smile on his face when he was like, and then you wake up and you scream bloody murder, ha <laughs> um, And he, he pretended that I got to approve, but I thought it was a great idea, right? It's so brutal. Um, and now I cost a fortune, because you have to green screen every fucking shot I'm in. <laughs> so it was a terrible idea, but, um, yeah. Did that answer your question? I feel like we're both delirious. <laughs> no, it did. Thank you. Yeah. I have no control. That's the answer. Uh, for Fiona, how did you first get involved in the franchise? Did Don approach you? Was it a bad idea? Like, how did that come yeah, so uh, so I had done True Blood, and I was like a you know waitress doing um, acting here and there. I would work like maybe twice a year, and they were casting Curse of Chucky. Um, I got an audition for Barbara, the sister, the like bitchy sister. I, t I tend to play villains as opposed to like screen the heroine. I don't know if you guys know whatever. I don't know why. But, but there was a phone call, I think, between my dad and Don. So I auditioned for it, but obviously nepotism helped, and I'm deeply grateful. <laughs> um, it felt like um, winning a kind of lottery, I think. So I auditioned for it, um, I tested for it, but I think certainly there was enthusiasm given my last name. Don told me that she was the only person who um, who auditioned where you could. He really felt that that could have happened to them. <laughs> there was something she got it. He believed that. Yeah. That a killer doll could hunt me. Isn't that yeah. sweet? <laughs> How did you get the acting bug? Like, did was it just? naturally inherent or um I, i've been around it my whole life i can't imagine I, I there's not a time when i don't remember being around it and what was it when i was a kid did i i mean i don't know i wanted it when i was a kid right and then not as a teenager because i hated everything as a teenager yeah she was like it was obvious that she was going to be an actress i remember uh, one of the agents said after he met her when she was just like five or six said um, you know I just met Fiona and I can tell you know in a few years she's going to be in my office wait how about you dad when did you know that you wanted to be an actor how old were you 16 16 when did you do your first play are you doing an yes I was <laughs> yeah. in my interview it was their job just um, yeah, no, I, uh, I, um, yeah, when I was 16, I did summer stock, and that was it. Alright, let's go. Uh, What do you got? Come on, you have all the good lines. He has all the best lines. The deal is, I can't remember my life. I don't know what I said. <laughs> do you guys, what's your favorite Chucky line? Nobody fucks with the chalk. No, I <laughs> There you go. <laughs> I, you know, it, for me, it's, um, I mean, he, Chucky does say some snappy stuff. But, you know, the, my problem is, is, um, is balancing the humor and the, this underbelly of, um, terror at, at, of, uh, Oblivion and um, and um, the the, um, the love of murder. <laughs> you know, Chucky loves his job, so it's uh, yeah. Um, he he'll do the laugh. And when I was growing up, the coolest thing about me when I was a kid was I was Chucky's daughter, which all the kids in the neighborhood knew. Uh, and he'd do the laugh one time a year on my birthday, which is the day before Halloween. So the kids would gather, and he'd be like, he's gonna do it. And we get one fucking laugh. So if he doesn't do it, know that it's not because of you. He never did it. Necessarily in the script, I was wondering if either of you had anything specific like that that you utilized to get into character. You got a good one. What? No, you say it. 
Because what, I asked him this question a hundred times before I played Charles Lee Ray. I was like, all right, what's the deal with Charles Lee Ray? What makes him tick? What did I say? Come on! <laughs> I don't remember what I well, said. Well, answer it now, and I'll tell you what I can't remember thing. what I said. I don't know what I said. <laughs> well, no, but what's the answer to the question? Um, the answer is, is anything, it's, when you look for a meaning, it has to affect you or it's not good. I mean, it can, can't sound, you, can, you know, write something for yourself that sounds like a good story so that it's lore, but that doesn't work because, because it doesn't mean anything. So, um, so you, you kind of get to stuff, I mean, you, if, you're terrified of something, then you find something you're terrified of. And you don't tell anybody. Because the second you start talking about it, it's counter help, you know, it's like a healthy thing to talk about something that's bothering you. But if you don't talk about it, it still bothers you, right? That's the idea. So it's reverse psychology. But did you it's make yourself sicker. Did you have a thing for Charles Lee Ray that made him tick? Yeah. Are you not going to talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> you don't get to know. I remember. <laughs> I know uh, father-daughter uh, relationships and daughter-father relationships are better than best friend relationships. So what's it like to uh, work with your best friend? <laughs> and do you guys get to spend more time together than you would if you weren't working together. That's a great question. And the answer to that is a resounding yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, uh, when we were doing the show, uh, we were both in Canada, and um, we her apartment was right next to my apartment. Um, we didn't have a little ha private hallway between the two, and Fiona cooked me dinner every <laughs> night and every day. Um, and, uh, you know, so we, we saw each other constantly. And, um, you know, we listened to documentaries together, and, or we didn't, you know. I would go off and do something, and she would go, but we worked a lot during that time. Um, <clears throat> and um, I, you know. I got a really cheesy thing to say. Um, one of the there's so many things I know people usually say this, but it's really true. There's so many things I'm grateful for with this franchise. It's ridiculous. But one of the main things is um, I I get to really spend time with my dad, which most adults don't. And I lost my mom when I was kind of young, so it like, or when she was too young, so it really kind of means a lot to me. <laughs> so when we were up in Canada, I was spent, you know, how many adults spend like a month hanging out with their dad for work? Like very weird. I mean, maybe it's not weird in other cultures or whatever, but um, it was something I was really grateful for. And we were, he's cool, he's fun. <laughs> you guys should hang out with them sometime. <laughs> is that last day on set together tough? Like, like you know that now you're both going different directions afterwards? Um, well, you guys we like yes. afterwards, and so Fiona came home for Christmas. Oh. <laughs> yeah, she does that every home. year. Yeah, and I come home for Christmas. So I told her that don't even think about not coming for Christmas. <laughs> oh. I was, and, and also, I live in Portugal, which is kind of far away, so this is like a whole... You know, anyway, it's very cute for the Duraffs. Thank you guys for watching the show and keeping this going because it's, we're really grateful for it. It feels like some fucking lottery or whatever. <laughs> anyway. This is kind of a funny question. What are your thoughts on Chucky versus Leprechaun? <laughs> Fun fact, he's too scared to watch any horror movies. <laughs> so I have no idea what that would be like. <laughs> uh, Don Mancini answers this question sometimes, and he's like, too obvious. But there is some horror icon he's thought about, um, and I don't remember which one. 
Is that helpful? Is that interesting or what? <laughs> what do you think about Chucky Leprechaun? I think it would be interesting to see a Chucky fight Leprechaun. Because they both, you know, have powers. And they're tiny. Yeah. Like, and it just makes sense. Yeah. You've got Freddy versus Jason. Why can't you have Chucky versus Leprechaun? Yeah. No, I, I, I um, you know, you, you should write Mancini. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe Lionsgate and Universal can work out a deal. Oh, there's that thing. Yeah, that would yeah, be yeah. fun to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, man. Yeah, hopefully. Thanks for the pitch. Thank you. This is for Fiona. Your dad has an extensive filmography. <laughs> out of all his movies, what is one of your favorites? Personally, I love One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Excellent yeah. film. Uh, one of my top three. What do you love? Out of your father. That he's done? Oh yes, my god. Yes. Okay, so fun fact, I have a really hard time watching him die. Um, which is cute again. Um oh man, he's been in so many good movies. I mean I mean this is horrible because he like beat the shit out of his wife, but Mississippi Burning, did you guys Ooh, see that? Nice. It was incredible. Um but my dad's a legendary actor, you know? Is he um, a legendary, yeah. I mean, Cuckoo's Nest is the one where I can't see him. It seems like a different person. Um, and he's also, in his soul, an innocent. Sorry, Dad, I know you're like in your 70s, but you're still an innocent. And I thought that um, Billy Bibbick was really an innocent. So that was, Absolutely. anyway. But there's a million. Sure. So what was it like to embody your father in, uh, <laughs> in the Chucky series, basically? <laughs> I know this is a generic question, but I had to ask. No, I know. It's very weird. Well, I didn't think it was going to be a thing until they, like, it takes four hours to make me look like that. And I was like, oh, this is going to be cool, not a big deal. And then I started to get more and more creeped out. And then, and then, and then it was weird. It was weird. It was weird. It was weirder than I thought it was going to be. I got used to it. Nothing personal. It just got really weird. And I still don't think I've totally have a straight answer that's my honest also in season one i was like with the women as him i was like what the fuck is going on <laughs> i just had to like separate it from him completely but i was like watching him to get the movements it was just very fucked up um but great i'm very grateful <laughs> weird you i mean do you look like your dad uh, yeah, a lot of people think we're twins. Really? God, yes. <laughs> I, um, I was doing, you guys know what ADR is, right? Yeah. That's when you, you do a uh, fix-up dialogue and stuff, um, after everything's shot. And you do that in a studio. Um, I was doing ADR, and, and I saw, um, as they were moving, uh, the scenes around, I saw the shot of me leaning against the wall, and I said, um, I don't remember doing that. <laughs> and I didn't. <laughs> so, I, I was also, there's like... Yeah, it's, it, it, was, it was spooky. It was spooky. Also, there's like, there's, you know, um, stuff about doing what your dad did, and then they plaster his face on your face. <laughs> And you're like, oh my god. Um, yeah, and you like hope you can live up to how good he is, and there was all kinds of stuff. And then it just felt like this crazy celebration. Um, so it was a bunch of things mixed into one. And oh, here's what happened. Um, I did the movie, and somebody did some demographic study, and they said, no, 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 we have to have... Um, we have to have a person who was who was in the movie before the you know oh, we can't have yeah. we can't have uh, Brad so they 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 got um, they got the guy who originally played the father um, but he couldn't do it he was an alcoholic and he really ruined himself and um, so they called me back and I had to redo everything because they changed the scene. Uh -huh. And so I had to do all of that twice. And it was a turn because the first time I think it was better. But um, it's okay, you know. I mean, it was okay. 
Can I tell you guys, I know you were dying for my impression of Exodus 3, but I actually have a memory of this. So my dad kind of gets in, he, he'll adopt the voice when I was young, and he keeps it until the, until the, the job is over, which can be really weird and embarrassing when you're in high school or whatever, and your dad sounds like a southern belle for like, whatever, <laughs> three months. But he was fucking creepy when he was the Gemini killer. He was just like kind of creepy. He was walking around the house and there was something that was just creepy for like a couple months. That's it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is it hard to let that go? Like once the film's over? Do you no, I mean, you know what? My shock absorbers are gone. And um, when you're, I mean, I, I just can't. I, you know, I play a lot of killers. I can't do it. <laughs> I'm, I, you know, really, I mean, it's a very dark place. And, you know, it's not like I kill people, but I do intend to. <laughs> well, you have to, I mean, you know, and, and I just, uh, I've had it. You know, I've had enough. Except for Chucky. But, see, Chucky loves his job. <laughs> so, there's mention of John Waters supposedly coming into season three. Mm. John Waters is one of my all-time favorites. So, I'm not asking for any spoilers. Don't want that. Okay. What I would like to ask for both of you, mm -hmm. which is your favorite John Waters film? Yeah, there's no way I could watch <laughs> Flamingo. I mean, that's not the eyeball thing. I heard about that, and it was just not going to happen. So I don't know John Waters' movies. Um, I know how. I know he's great, and I know he's phenomenally influential. I didn't meet him. I didn't get to meet him when. when, uh, when uh, but yeah, he is in it. If that's what you want to know. He's a legendary audio con. Yes, absolutely. For the queer community, and he's uber funny. And Pink Flamingo's absolutely traumatized <laughs> my coworkers. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's definitely a big film for me. But Multiple Maniacs is definitely high up on the list. Uh, uh, when you were growing up, did you ever get to visit the sets of any of your dad's movies? And do you have any memorable experiences from doing that? I mean, I got to visit, yeah. I was like a lucky ass kid, man. I, I like, I don't know. Do you, were you in the Gremlins? I was, who was I trying to figure this out with? What spaceship were you in where there were little creatures? I got, I have, it, you were in Gremlins. No, 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 no. They were, they were little furry round things. <laughs> Somebody at this convention, I bet, he was like, your dad was not in Critters. And I was like, fuck it was, I remember it. And, and then I backed off and I was like, you must be right, he wasn't. So whoever that is, you were wrong if you're not in here. Anyway, point, I'm sorry, I got, uh, I got to go to all these cool sets. I got to go to so many cool places. I was a very lucky kid. Have you been to sets? Are you no, pursuing it? Uh, I am going to pursue film now. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the family. So it's a, it is about Exorcist Three. Um, I find you incredibly like mesmerizing in that movie. Um, what did you do to more or less find like the the truth of the Gemini character, um, Gemini killer character, I should say? Because it literally just felt like I was watching somebody who was like pulled out of hell and put on screen. Like you're so convincing in that movie. Did you um, kill somebody? Did you kill somebody, Red? <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly not going to tell you. Oh. <laughs> All right, cut the camera. <laughs> um, what did I? You know, I I um I really struggled with that for a while to really find what what it is. I think I think there is a place where you become so disconnected from pain that um, that um, you it, the world isn't real and and you can kill out of that because the world isn't real um, it 
it, I can understand that it could be, you could get to a place where it would feel like the right thing to do, you know, um, because you can't because you can't feel anything. You know, you react to somebody, but you don't you don't feel it. You don't feel like you're alone completely. And I and I think that that there is a point in which um, you people can murder out of the need to um, to feel alive at all. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. Isn't that pleasant? You ask me. <laughs> it's a dark place. It's yeah. a very dark place. You, you captured it brilliantly, though. Like that really is just like a mesmerizing performance. Yeah, I mean, it. It. Um, I, I. I remember it was. Uh, it was like. The idea was, is you kill as, a, as an art form, because what is art? Art is... Well, that is loud. Doesn't this feel like weird timing? <laughs> I don't know, Bill Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I did do a it the Gemini. Art is about communication. <laughs> and art is about, is about communicating something that can't be said. You know, you can't say, uh, you know, it's not math. Art is not math. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it's an exact thing. It's, it's, it's about things that are beyond words, that, that are communicated. Thank you. As much as I love Chuck E. Gordon's was my first real fandom love. Um, so, what was it like to uh, get to kill mega icon Christopher Lee? Uh, uh, At the risk of going to you have to understand, Christopher Lee is not um, is not really arrogant at all. He talks a lot, <laughs> and or did he's no longer with us. Um, and you know, he tells you things he's done and so forth, and. And after a while, you think nobody could do all that. And I know that um, 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 David Carradine was working with him, for instance. I'll, I'll tell you this story about Christopher Lee. And um, David, you know, was uh, doing a scene where he had to, was going to do a scene where he had to throw a knife and hit something. And he was really practicing it. And, um, and, um, uh, he came by, Christopher came by, and he said, Oh, you know, I can hit anything with the sharp object. <laughs> and um, David had had enough, you know, and said, Oh, really? Show me. He said, Oh, of course. And he went off the cell. A rusty nail. And you know what, dartboard? You know, nobody can hit the bullseye. He goes off 20 paces and Right dead center with the rusty wow. nail. Why not? The bullseye. And, Typical. And um, David went, oh. <laughs> I get it. He did win World War II. Yeah. And um, he does know everybody on planet Earth. Um, I had, uh, I did foreign press with him one day. And, um, I mean, it was like everybody from every country in the world came in. And he greeted everybody in their own language. Wow. So, um, he was, um, you know, he, when you're that brilliant, you know, it's hard to be humble. <laughs> he, I mean, he, and he wasn't being, he wasn't bragging, he was just telling the truth. Um, and uh, Fiona, I just wanted to say that you absolutely blew me away in particular with your uh, performance as Charles Lee Gray because until I watched like the featurette like after the episode I dead ass thought they just CG your dad to be your age <laughs> so, and you're you're such a blast to watch both of you uh, had the chance to kill anyone on screen living or dead who would you who would you choose <laughs> Chance to kill anyone on screen, living or dead? Maybe I'm about to do Christopher Lee. I know. <laughs> <laughs> who would I kill? Do you know who one of my 
my favorite actresses, um, I don't know if I want to kill him or kiss him or whatever, but David Thewlis, I killed David Thewlis just because he's so good. He's a good actor. It's a boring, weird answer, but I don't know. David Thewlis? Yeah, you kill the one that would be the most fun to kill. Oh, he'd be so good. <laughs> you know, and, and, and who you want to work with, because if you kill him, you have to work you with him. You gotta work with him. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Who would you kill, Dad? Oh, there's tons of people. <laughs> I mean, you know, that, like that waiter. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, this is too many. Too, too many. many. Who would you Who kill? Did? You got to kill? Oh, I mean, I can't say that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> just in case. <laughs> I just like a fuck, Mary kill, but just go. No. <laughs> I mean, like lost. What's your favorite variation of the Chucky doll? Ooh, there's a lot of good ones, man. I mean, how, first of all, I just noticed this creepy scream people. <laughs> yes, that's you. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I think, like an old Chucky, it's like Yoda. It's so creepy. Okay, so I'm going to go with old Chucky. What do you got, Dad? Old Chucky? Yeah. Oh. No, variations on the Chucky doll. There's many of them now, no, right? I thought you were talking about something. <laughs> no, no, it already premiered. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, old I Chucky. I was like, shit, no, old I Chucky is Old Chucky is a really cool Ugh. looking doll. Wait, but you gotta pick your, you can't pick my answer. What do you got for your favorite Chucky? Because there's like, there's a lot of them, right? There's Colonel Chucky. <laughs> I mean, Colonel Chucky was so weird, Dad. Which one did you like doing? Good Chucky? Um, I think, I think I liked, I mean, if we're talking, it would now change the question. No, that was the question, right? No, the question, the one I, I liked, I liked, I liked doing Good Chucky. Oh, yeah. Because, uh, Good Chucky, not because he was good, um, but because he was funny. I thought he was the funniest. Brando Chucky was like um, a pain in the ass. Brando Chucky was so fucking funny. Also, Hulk Chucky with the abs. It was so funny. I thought it was really funny. Was that the question? I was right, right? Okay, thank you. Uh, just those scenes had so much energy. Probably she's the only person in this room who's seen this show. But there was a show on BBC America I went for two years with Elijah Wood and Tyler Labine and all these people and I just played this like, what the fuck was I? I don't even know. Like homeless, holistic, murdering, dirty. I was so dirty. <laughs> I was the filthiest character you've ever seen. They would cover me from dirt from head to toe. And I just had to stay like that for like days. Anyway, uh, really fun. I had a great time. And Tyler Labine is still a good friend of mine, who's the coolest dude in the world. Um, thank you for seeing that show. Yeah, I watched it as it aired. Like, I followed it. It was amazing. Yeah, it was Watch super fun. That shit, Watch that shit, y'all. Watch that shit, y'all. So, Colt and Curse of Chucky came out around the time that I recently watched some of my own. Ah, okay. Um, and so I was curious, what was it like, what kind of training and physical acting did you really have to work into, like, not being able to use your legs? And, um, to do that stuff justice, yeah, for sure. Um, so I had played um, a paraplegic once before in a not very good Lifetime movie, but I, uh, I at one point, was taken to a hospital and kind of met with people and worked out and um, tried to, it's all about trying to get an emotional sense of what that is and, and bring dignity to it and not make it identify, be the identity of, you know, the whole person, which I think was pretty important that it wasn't, you know, it, it, it didn't define her, but it was a major aspect and, um, I, you know, I just did my best to do it justice. Um, and I talked, I, at one point I went around in a mall and like went out in a wheelchair and, and tried to um, really get a sense of what that's like for a full day. And, and uh, Don made it a point to 
bring a sexuality to the character and make sure that she was like a, you know, full person, so. That was actually one of my favorite things about your character is that she's just so, she's scary and like attractive and she's like, she's not just in a wheelchair, she's very much uh, a full, like, you play a very scary <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate you saying that. Thank you so much. Who came up with Dembella? And does it truly mean anything? And do you still know about her? Who came up with Dembella? And um, who came up with the Dembella, the Dembella like voodoo curse or voodoo thing that you do to the doll? Um, and does it truly mean anything, or was just just words that were created to make it sound? Um, no, I mean you can translate the French, and it does mean something. But um, and it's you know it's basic. Um, uh, I mean, obviously, no one can do that. Um, what do you mean? Nobody can raise the dead. You, you can't put yourself in a doll. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, at least. I'm not aware of anybody having done that. Um, so, yeah, that's, I mean, in that sense, it's not real, but there is some lore there. And when we were doing the first one, uh, there was a guy who played the priest who was actually uh, very into voodoo. Yeah, it's a Creole prayer, I think, right? Like, it's a, it's a well, I know that it's, uh, it's not true. Dumbala is real. I mean, Dumbala is a god and, and uh, appears as a snake. He's a snake and he's like the cosmic birth and death of, of, of the universe. And um, In what lineage? And, and um, Ade is his wife. Oh. And um, she's... Uh, there's a book called The Serpent and the Rainbow which oh. explains it. Um, I read that book. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I don't so remember that's anything. that's really who who is praying to. Which is... Can can we get just one? And I'm surprised nobody's asked for it yet. Can we get just one chuffy laugh? Just one. <laughs> I you know. You didn't hear what Fiona said? <laughs> I know it's not. It's not Halloween. I'll get on my knees and beg. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, um, you know, people are going to ask me to do this if I do this. It's just the one. <laughs> <laughs> but my question goes back to 2007, and it's for Brad. How was it working with Mr. Rob Zombie for his Halloween franchise? I thought, you know, he did something that was very strange and kind of cool. He, first of all, he, he um, when writing the second one, he didn't have any time to do it in. Um, I mean, I, I think he had like four weeks and he had to come up with a, a finish. And so he didn't have really a finished script when we started to rehearse. And, we were talking, and he kept using dialogue that people used out of the, when they were just, we were just talking to each other. And nothing to do with the movie, but, and, and he would use all that, and I think he used, it was very successful. It, it, um, added, it made, um, you know, this kind of horror, when you're talking about something that isn't real, making it real, isn't easy. Um, and he used regular conversation that it was natural that we really did to really help with that. He really brought us into the, into the and he had a real sense of humor and he's way smarter than he, than he sounds like. Oh, you know, way smarter. He's a really nice guy. I met him a couple years ago, but thank you for his nice sure. question. Also, my friend Tom wants to say that he wants to let you know that Deadwood was something very special. Oh, well, yeah. thank you. Right, thank you. Sure. Let's try to lighten it up a little bit. What's your best Jennifer Tilly story? Because it seems like a very fun person to work with across several films and television shows now. What is your best Jennifer Tilly story? 
And then you probably have better ones than me. I mean, uh, you know, um, well, first of all, she's very cool. And I, this isn't like lip service because oftentimes, nothing personal, but if someone's been famous for a long time, they get kind of boring because they don't get accurate feedback from the world and whatever. Fame can fuck people up. Jennifer Tilly is really cool, like genuinely cool. Um, I really like her. She's very funny and super fucking generous. Um, grew up really poor and became this like great success. Where she's super generous and hilarious. I don't know. <laughs> she um, she's wacky. You know, me and her, uh, we kind of we like got dressed in lingerie and like rolled around in a bed. <laughs> you know, and I've known her since I was a kid. You we were like, all right. <laughs> um, and uh, I don't know, man. I just, I really, I really, really like her. She's also whip smart and plays dumb. She's fucking whip smart. Um, and will kick your ass in poker. <laughs> um, these are not anecdotes. I know. Um, I just, I just dig her. Dad, what's your favorite Jennifer Tilly story? Oh, I like the one she, she, she told about The Simpsons. I mean, no, no, it's the story of well, what? I'm, I'm so controlling. Say whatever you want. Sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't talk about this. No, no, you do whatever you want. Oh, well, she, you know, she, um, her um, husband at the time wrote The Simpsons, the TV series. And, and she really, uh, she said, uh, she said, this is never going to work. You know, it's, it's going to be a complete flop. And you're really stupid to get involved in it. And, um, and uh, <laughs> it was The Simpsons. So, wow. you know, and, um, and then they got divorced and she got residuals from The Simpsons. <laughs> and she's fabulously wealthy because of that. Wonder so, I mean, why you never see you know, her. This is this is a woman who's fabulously wealthy from giving wrong advice. <laughs> As I grew older, it became a little bit easier. Like I say, it's I, I just can't do it anymore. I'm done. You know, there's a point when you're really done. Um, but I, I, you know, when I first started out, I do tend to stay in character when I'm working. Um, and um, I learned from doing Cuckoo's Nest, um, because I was playing a stutterer, one of the things that they do with stutterers is they have them go in difficult, really difficult situations like Grand Central Station where everybody's, you know, in a hurry and, um, and, and really forced conversation to get used to the, to the, the stick, to the real fear of talking. And so I did that and um, it was like really useful. Uh, I mean, people just assumed I really stuttered, and, you know, so all worry about not coming across as a real stutterer went flying out the window. And I also learned that suddenly people were enormously patient with me, which was kind of a cool thing, which was kind of a cool thing. So, you know, um, I kind of used that a lot to be in character to really feel in the natural world what it's like to be this person. You know, if I, if I have this kind of accent, I use the accent the whole time. Um, when I did Green a Worm Tongue, I spoke with received pronunciation. And I learned things from it, just talking in real life. There's a certain snootiness to, um, to, the, to English. It's, I mean, it's a real thing. Mm -hmm. The, the precision with words and, and so forth, and um, and an emphasis on being very smart, um, and it was helpful. You know, it it, it helped create a, a an attitude that um, that that was right. 
that and, and you know, um, conversations I had with the, with the writers. I just wanted to firstly say, I feel like Chucky is the first mainstream, like, mega slasher to really welcome and include and embrace the queer community, and that means a lot to so many of us. Uh, Chucky was a safe space for me as a kid, like, for a really long time. And it's super important to me that I grew up on that, so thanks so much. Sure. And um, I'm not going to ask you to laugh, but would you mind saying who the fuck is Martha Stewart? Who the fuck is Martha Stewart? I can die happy. <laughs> <laughs>